Well, hey everybody, it's Tuesday. Glad you've joined me for today's video devotion. We are in Genesis chapter 42, so open your Bible to that chapter if you haven't already. Hope you also have your journal or notebook so you can take some notes. And I, I really hope you've already read this chapter and, and written down in your journal or on your notebook what God said to you, what he's teaching you to help you grow as a disciple. Um, when I was reading this chapter and thinking about it, meditating on it, and uh, praying about it, uh, two things really stood out to me, so I want to talk about both of those. Um, the first one has to do with the way Joseph tested his brothers. You'll remember that when he was 17 years old, his brothers uh, sold him to Ishmaelite traders who were on their way to Egypt, and then he ended up being sold as a slave to Potiphar, then ended up in prison. Um, well, now he's elevated to number two in command in Egypt. And... Uh, for seven years, they had great harvest, and he was in charge of gathering a lot of that harvest and storing it for what would be seven years, seven subsequent years of severe famine. Well, that famine also struck Canaan, where his father and brothers lived, whom he had not seen. Well, he was 17 when, he, when, he, when they sold him as a slave. He was 30 when he became number two in command. Uh, and then the seven years of, of good harvest passed, so that made him, what, 37, and the famine probably would have taken a, a a couple of years before they, so he's pushing 40 years old, so really, it's been more than two decades, a little bit more than 20 years since Joseph saw his brothers, or his brothers saw him, and he was a teenager the last time, so they wouldn't recognize him. He would recognize them, though, um, because they were older, and they wouldn't change as much as he would, um, and also, he's in the regalia of the number two guy in uh, in Egypt. And they come to Egypt to buy grain, and Joseph is in charge of all that. And he's going to put them to the test to see if they've changed, to see if they are honest, to see if they are now good. And the long and short of it is he, he accuses them of being spies, and he interrogates them about their family. He already knows all this, but he interrogates them anyway to see what they will say, and they acknowledge they have a father back home, they have another younger brother back home, and so he, he keeps Simeon as a prisoner and sends them back to Canaan with food, and then he also sneaks and has his uh, servants put the money they paid for the food back in the bags with the grain, and they don't realize that until later. So he's testing them, are they going to come back and bring, because he says, when you come back, you better have Benjamin, that, that younger brother with you. If you don't have your younger brother with you, don't come back. It won't go well for you. He's going to see if they're telling, if, if they are telling him the truth, if they're honest. And by putting that money in there, it's also testing them to see what, what are they going to do with that the next time they come back. He's also being kind to them because he gives them food and, and putting that money in there back in the bags. is not just a test. It's also an act of kindness because he knew what he hoped would happen, and he didn't want their money. Uh, he didn't want to take that from his family. And as I thought about that, one of the takeaways for me is that when people have betrayed you, people have hurt you, injured you, uh, let you down, uh, it is okay to be kind to them while also uh, being hesitant to trust them. Now, sometimes in reconciliation, forgiveness and trust and all of that is, is immediate. At other times, it takes some time. It's not quite as fast. Um, and, and, and you can forgive someone and be good to them. That doesn't mean you automatically trust them with the deepest things of your life. Joseph was being very good to them. Uh, he had a, he was, we already know from the rest of the story, he had a very positive disposition toward them. He, you know, he was not holding on to his grudges, but he was still testing them. He was being cautious. Um, there's still consequences to what his brothers had done and they've got to show that they've changed. Okay. And sometimes when people have committed great crimes or great wrongs toward others, forgiveness doesn't mean that the consequences of that wrong just goes away all of a sudden. Sometimes people have to earn trust. Forgiveness can be given quickly. Trust is earned. And that's what Joseph is doing here. And uh, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Um, it's foolish sometimes to automatically trust somebody because you don't know if their apologizing is real or not. 
All right, second, second thing for me in uh, chapter 42 is how powerful his brother's jealousy and anger toward him had really been when he was that 17-year-old teenager that they sold into slavery. If you look in the chapter um, at verse 21, verse 21, <clears throat> then they said to one another, that, now that, remember, they're in Egypt now, and Joseph is testing them, and they, he's just told them, one of you is going to stay behind here as a prisoner until you come back with your younger brother. And they, they already know that their father was devastated once because they told him that Joseph had been killed. And to lose another son, they just can't imagine what that would do to their elderly father. And so they're talking among themselves. And in verse 21, uh, they said to one another, truly, we are guilty concerning our brother. They're talking about what they had done to Joseph more than 20 years earlier. Because we saw, notice this, we saw the distress of his soul when he pleaded with us, yet we would not listen. Therefore, this distress, you know, of Simeon being a prisoner has come upon us. I never really noticed the middle of that verse in the past where they are saying, now almost more than 20 years later, they still remember when Joseph was 17 and they pulled him out of that pit they had thrown him in to sell him to the Ishmaelites as a slave. They said, he pleaded with us we saw the distress of his soul. Now get that image in your mind. Here's this 17-year-old teenager, the youngest of the 11, you know, Benjamin Benjamin had had not yet been born, so or, or what was it there? So it's, it's, it's his 10 older brothers, his 10 older brothers, and Joseph is the youngest of them. He's 17 years old, and his brothers are selling him as, as a slave and the distress of his soul and he's pleading. Can't you see that? Please don't. Oh, why don't? Can't you just imagine him begging them not to do this? And they said, we would not listen. That points to how much they really hated Joseph back then. To how powerful anger and jealousy can be and the evil that it can cause us to do. And as a pastor, I would say to any of you who are struggling with jealousy, who are struggling with, with anger, uh, who are st uh, struggling with some degree of hatred, you're playing with dynamite. And it's powerful. And if you hold on to it, it's going to blow up and cause you to do something vile and evil and harmful. So don't hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. Hey, God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.